Today you'll see how anyone can paint this baby fox step by step in watercolor. A good outline will give you the basic structure to build on. Then washes of color will flesh out the baby fox and establish the basic shading. After that, it's up to you if you want a background or more fur detail. Start your painting with burnt sienna or your brown, very watery. If your brown isn't red enough for the fox, you can add red or orange. With a small brush, paint a light coat of the reddish brown over all the red fox areas. It's nice to leave a line of unpainted white at the top of the head where the sunlight is hitting it. Paint the fur on the fox's head and the top of his muzzle. Paint the rest of the body, except for the white on the chest and belly, and the white tip of his tail. Dry the light brown very well. Next you want a black, a real deep dark black. Use black to paint the inside of the fox's ears, the nose, and add a line for the mouth. You get extra credit if you give your fox a tiny smile. The front legs are also black. And last, a line of black around the outside of the ears. Next up are the eyes. Your eyes need to be great, so be careful painting them, or you can use an ink pen for this. Foxes have a line of black around the outside of their eyes and an elongated black pupil. Put that in and dry it well. Then paint the rest of the eye with brown or gold. If it seems too dark, use a thirsty brush to lift up some of the brown so that the pupil shows through. For the nose, you can use a clean, damp brush to re-wet the top of the nose a little bit. 
I also re-wet and lifted a tiny half circle for each side of the nostrils, but that's pretty small. Okay, that's the base color for the fox. Next, you'll want to add some shading. To add shading in the white areas, we're going to use gray. You can water down your black to make gray, and if you don't like the color, add a little bit of the brown. Start with shading under the chin. You want this shading to have nice soft edges, so let's wet the area under the chin with clean water first. Then gradually add your gray right under the chin and let it bleed out. If yours gets too dark, don't panic. On a dark gray chest, you can add white on top for fur and it will look great. A hint of shading on the left side of the face is nice. And the inside of the ears also get a light coat of gray. Oops, I almost missed the darker lines on the side of the fox's muzzle. You could probably leave them out if you want. Next, we're going to add darker shading in the brown areas. This part of the head is darker, but be sure to leave the lighter areas around the eyes. They're small, but the eyes are important. On the body, outline the front leg, put darker brown on the area above the tail. You can use short brush strokes to indicate some fur.
The bottom of the tail is also darker, with lots of longer brush strokes. I used a little black to darken up the brown even more, where I wanted the darkest value at the bottom. And then, if your areas don't blend, rinse out your brush and use the clean, damp brush to blend the dark into the lighter areas. Don't forget to add shading to the white tip of the tail with some watery black or gray. At this point, you can stop here and have a nice painting. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add more fur texture. Where the fur is short, like on the head, use the dot and dab method. It's easy and it will give you that model look of short fur. Dot on some of your color and then dab the dots with the end of your finger to smudge them. Use opaque white to add a furry look to the white. I'm adding some white to the fluff in his ears. I like a tiny white highlight on the top of the nose. It makes it look damp. Now, if you like the furry look, you can add more fur strokes on the face, especially a little around the eyes. You could stop right here, but for people who want more, let's add a little more fur and a background. Since your fox is medium and dark values, the best background would be light or very dark. Any colors will work, but I'm mixing a yellow green with light blue on the side. Wet your background first for a smoother wash. Use a large wash brush for the best results. Paint the color around the top two-thirds of the fox and just let it spread out.
I'm putting a little light blue on the left edge and bottom right because it gives the suggestion of a diagonal. I like that in my paintings. Now my paper is sloppy wet, so I wipe up the edges and I wick up the puddles. You want a darker color at the bottom. You can paint this on dry paper and the top doesn't have to dry. Because where the dark hits the lighter area, it should bleed up. If it doesn't, you can also take a small brush and pull up a few stalks of grass if you want them. Now, my colors aren't blending as much as I'd like in this background. So I take a clean, damp brush and see if I can blend them a bit. It is still wet, but this paint isn't moving. So I add more of the light yellow to the edge of the blue to create a merge zone. And since it's now starting to dry, I give it a spray with the misting bottle to keep everything evenly damp so that it doesn't dry in a weird pattern since I was in there playing with it. Remember that white area on top of the fox's head? Take a small brush and add a very watery brown. And if it's too dark, lift most of it back up. That's about it for a baby fox for beginners. Outline, color, shading, and fur. That's how you paint animals. If you want more realism, you can keep darkening the shadows and adding more and more fur lines. You can find this free lesson and more on my website. I have a new website coming next month where you won't have to sign in, and it will include more great tips and lessons for beginning painters. So remember, you can do it. You're never too old or too young. Have fun and keep painting with DebWatson.org. Happy painting!